the Dear David story. It's almost too perfect. You can see Dear David over a course of picture on picture walking towards the camera. I think what happened to Adam Ellis is true. To an extent. What's up guys, it's Sam back at you with another video. So a couple weeks ago, I did this video called Calling Momo on FaceTime at 3 a.m. A lot of you guys didn't watch it because you thought it was some clickbait title, but what I was doing was going through the challenge and debunking it and kind of seeing if it worked or not, testing out the waters, kind of how I do with the rituals and stuff. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But I was asking you guys, yo, do you want me to do this more often? Because I really enjoy this, like going into the big stories of the internet and then debunking them. Because to me, I found it really interesting to see what could be real and what could be fake. Because I've seen a lot of stuff that's like, meh, I don't think this is real. Or two, there's other reasons why these ghosts are doing things. For example, with the Momo challenge, it wasn't necessarily a ghost or some demon that like you FaceTime or whatever. It was a plot to get credit card information and children's sympathy, stuff like that. Very weird. But there is a much, much bigger story that has surfaced and we are around the one year anniversary. That is, as the title says, the Dear David story. Now, if you've never heard of the Dear David viral ghost story, it was this thing that originated on Twitter by this dude called Adam Ellis. I'll link his Twitter in the description because I'm gonna be using a lot of his tweets. Shout out to you, man. This is a very interesting story. Now, if you have heard of it and you've read it through, I would love to hear your opinions and whether or not if you agree with me, but if you haven't, might as well go check it out, maybe read it. However, one note, this guy Adam just recently ended this story back in March of this year. So it it went on for I think like eight or nine months. With that being said, there is about an hour's worth of tweets that you have to read. First and foremost, I want to say I'm not going to read all of those Dear David tweets. If you want, yes, cool, let me know in the comments. I can just go through and read the whole story and we can go section by section and deep dive this thing. But I'm assuming you guys just want the quick synopsis just like I do. They don't, you don't want to spend an hour on this video. You just want to see what's the juicy facts. So we're going to go in, I'm going to summarize what really happened, why I think it's real or why I think it's not. Anyway, with that being said, let's get into it. First thing you need to know is who the heck is David, who the heck is Adam, and why the heck am I telling you this story? What this guy did was he put all his tweets about his ghost in his apartment on this giant Twitter thread. So I'm gonna be referencing tweets and referencing things that he says in this video. However, obviously I'm not gonna read every single tweet. I'm just gonna give you the important stuff. Started Monday, August 7th of 2017. He claims my apartment is currently being haunted by a ghost of a dead child and he's trying to kill me. This is the thread. Ba -ba -ba. That, my friends, is a major red flag. And why I think you guys should read this with a grain of salt. Anyway, if you go to Adam's actual Twitter, Adam Ellis is a comic boy and he's a writer. He has stories, comics, merch, all this stuff that he's made based off of his projects, based off of his comics. You know this guy is a writer. He creates ideas for children all the time, and then just so happens that this one giant Twitter story becomes very popular. Hmm, I'm not debunking it, I'm not saying this isn't right. I'm just saying out of everyone in the world to have this crazy thing happen to him, why is it this comic book writer? Speaking of comics, this is Dear David, obviously drawn out by the comic himself in his own vision. So I'm gonna read how it starts here because it's very interesting. This guy apparently started having sleep paralysis when he had nightmares. So Dear David, he started appearing in my dreams, but I think he's crossed over into the real world. When I first saw him, I was experiencing sleep paralysis and saw a child sitting in a green rocking chair at the front of my bed. So sleep paralysis is when you wake up, like your mind is awake and you can see things, but your body can't move because your body is still asleep. So a lot of people experience this and it's pretty scary because they're currently dreaming and other things are in their room, AKA Dear David, they can't move because their body's asleep. 
So this guy is seeing a Dear David child in a green rocking chair at the end of his bed, and he can't do anything because he's sleep paralyzed. He had a huge mishap in head, it was dented on one side and then he drew it. So this became the face of Dear David. Long story short, the next dream he had, a girl came up to him and said, you've seen Dear David, haven't you? He said, who? Dear David, you saw him. She says, he's dead. He only appears at midnight. You can ask him two questions. But then she added, but never try to ask him a third question or he'll kill you. And then so he asked this guy in his dream the next day, Dear David, how did you die? He said, an accident in the store. What happened in the store? Dear David says, a shelf was pushed on my head, aka why he has the dent. Then he asks, who pushed the shelf? And David didn't answer. Of course, dude, it's the third goddamn question. Why'd you do that? It's like all the movies. We get invested and we're like, no, why, why would you ask? a third question. At that point he said he woke up, he felt absolutely terrified. He said he couldn't find anything about this Dear David situation, why this guy would die in a store from a, a shelf accident, he had no luck. And he said a couple days later he moved into a different apartment, and then a month or two went by where nothing happened. So well, that's one thing I do want to add. Why would someone that's grabbing attention of, an, of a reader leave a story blank after nothing for two months? Like this is an interesting story at first, but I would assume if you wanted to keep a reader's attention or if you did this for a Twitter following that you would be like, oh, let's continue going. And there's been interviews and stuff like that before saying like, is this fake? Why do you think it's not fake? And why can you tell the viewers and your Twitter followers that it's not fake? And Adam always suggests, well, if this was fake, I would probably be posting this a lot more often than once a week. This story was spread out from August 7th to March of 2018. So literally months and months. Let's continue. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit, but after he meets his dear David, he moves into a higher apartment. He said that nights and nights went by where his cats would just stare underneath like this. His cats would be underneath the door and he'd be like, what is going on? So he looked through his peephole finally after days and days and guess what? He thinks that he's captured dear David. So these are the two pictures that he came across and he thinks that there's someone in these two pictures, like close to the banister, there's a little like shadow figure. And so throughout this story, he has that happen where there's just a little bit of shadow figure in one picture, but not in the other. And then he kept on, kept on like with the story. These cats would still be meowing at the door, which is very weird. And he has video evidence to prove that the cats would stand at the door. He even went as far as to buying this motion sensor video camera to go live on video to show when his cats randomly at midnight would go to the door. So in that sense, I'm like, whoa, how the heck did that happen? That's actually kind of cool. Now he does things like put salt, like I said, tries to do videos. He left for a couple weeks. He bought a Polaroid camera, started taking pictures. One other thing to note, he went in and took a bunch of pictures of his room, but when he would go down one specific hallway, the Polaroid, would be blank. And a lot of people are like, huh, I, I wonder if he could fake that. Here's the proof of him saying like, if you were to cover and try to make a black photo versus if the photo just came out black. So you can see he's not faking that. He does a really, really good job of throughout this story. Adam does a very good job of covering his tracks, but a lot of news stories are coming out with this, and this has been a huge, huge viral thing, so there's a lot of information about this. A lot of news stations say it's almost too perfect because there's a few more things that are odd about Adam's story. Yeah, he's a comic book writer. Yeah, like this is happening live in his story, but why is it that every single time he writes one of these tweets, because like I said, there you know, there's just a million tweets back and forth, back and forth, it's always like cliffhanger and he does it about once a week, almost like a TV show. So a lot of people are blaming him, thinking that this story of Dear David is not as true as expected, because one, he's a writer, two, it's like a TV show, three, this is the most popular he's ever been on Twitter. There's a lot to this story where he proves right and wrong, and you guys can get into it, and like I said, if you really, really want to, we can go in and read the whole thing. That's just gonna be a very long, long video. I'm, I'm just gonna go through a couple of main, main points that happened throughout the story, and then I'm gonna tell you my final opinion on this. So he starts to get Twitter involved more back and forth and asks them what to do, like about the video camera, about if they, he should move, he tries Sage, and he's like basically going back and forth with Twitter and taking their ideas to get people more active. So with that, I think it's kind of odd he does that. 
Although any storyteller or YouTuber would do that. Like if obviously if I'm going through something like that, um, some crazy thing, I'm recording it, I'm telling you guys. So I understand it to a point of like you want to capitalize on a ghost experience. So he records a lot of different things and he said that one time he was called multiple, multiple times throughout the week and he answered one time thinking it was a tele telemarketer on this no caller ID thing and he said he'd been hearing static every night, like three o'clock in the morning. And that's what he heard on this phone call as well. After about one minute, it went turned to silence. So it wasn't a telemarketer, but there was someone calling and all of his ear was this crazy, static and then silence. I would say with that, if he's tweeting all this and there's this viral ghost story going on uh, all along the lines, probably someone has gotten his number and just spammed the crap out of him. Maybe that could be it, maybe not. I don't know, that's just one of my caveats as to why he might've gotten those calls. So back and forth, a lot of times he goes out of town like on these long trips. Like I said, the first time it was a month where he didn't say anything, then he went to Japan. He's gone a lot of different places. Adam is a traveler. When he does leave, he puts these sound motion recording systems going on and he can watch them from outside of town and which is odd and a lot of things that have researched about this today is that there are a lot of stories and paranormal vi like movies based around like long-term recordings that are kind of crappy you know like the paranormal videos are all based on handheld cameras stuff like that and obviously this guy is in the writing business and what was very interesting to me is it is in talks and I'm not 100% positive but by a couple of different movie companies that they're gonna create Dear David the movie based on this viral story. So one other thing that I kind of expect, maybe trying to debunk it a little bit, is yeah, this guy seems like these crazy things are happening to him, but is he testing if this viral story would be picked up enough to be on this movie? Like, is he testing his pitch to a movie company to make it happen? However, one really interesting thing is he actually does catch a lot of evidence. Like I said, he has those motion recordings which cause, or like, see his cats moving, he sees this chair that Dear David like originally was at the bottom of his bedside. He catches that moving. He also gets pictures in the middle of the night and he has these pictures, like these 12 pictures of dear David sitting in a chair at the bedside. Like they're very fuzzy, dark, obviously, you know, the not so clear so you can know it's 100% real, but like also scares the living bejeebies out of you. Yeah, that type of picture. Anyway, I'll pop a couple on the screen and you can tell me whether or not you think these are 100% real. Yeah, there's probably a lot, a lot of people that believe this. Now, I'm not docking it, saying it's not, but I'm actually saying that he, out of every storyteller, does an amazing job of taking pictures of everything that happens. Like throughout, wherever he goes, anytime he sees something weird or hears a noise, he documents where that's at with a phone and like throws it up on a tweet. So he's, he's probably better at documenting and proving a lot of things than I've ever seen before. This is probably why it's gone so viral. Now, Here's kind of how it ends. This is all building, building, building over months and months, and I think it comes to its movie-made climax around December. Specifically, December 12th is where I think he meant to end the Dear David story. He takes those pictures again, and at the end of all that, it shows that a scary little child has hair, frizzly weird hair, right up in the picture frame. You can see Dear David over a course of picture on picture walking towards the camera and then getting right up into it. Now, one, if this is a ghost trying to haunt this Adam dude, why is he going at his iPhone? But two, wasn't he bald before in, in, in other pictures too? I, I didn't 100% get that part of the story. And then three, right after this happens, December 20th, he starts leaving for the holidays. Makes sense, yeah. So he leaves for Montana, has um, very vague things happen, like trickles in the snow. But after that, he says, you know what guys, it's honestly been fine. I didn't know if I was gonna update you after that. That was about the, the craziest it's been. For everyone asking, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't worry about me, I will be okay. His last words were, of course I'll keep you updated if anything strange happens, but for now, I'm staying busy with drawing and other projects. Hmm. A couple things I want to note before we end 
this in the synopsis of the story. Obviously, I didn't get all the details, so yeah, I might be missing some stuff. So if you want to fill me in on that or explain more about Dear David, please do in the comment section below. Here's my thing, and I have a lot of opinions on this, and obviously if I read it more into it, I could give you a better opinion on that, so maybe I will do a follow-up video here in a bit. But my opinion on this is I think what happened to Adam Ellis is true. To an extent. He suffered from sleep paralysis to the point where he had horrible terror dreams about this weird Dear David character. And because he had this Dear David character and he was living alone with his cats and weird things started happening, he started being like, oh geez, something is happening. And he started forming it. Because when you are alone, just as happens to me all the time, when you're alone, especially when you're at an apartment by yourself and you've had these dreams so you're, so a picture is already in your mind, you do see things. And so I'm not knocking that at all. I do think he had some crazy experience where he was horrified and he wanted to share that. My caveats. I think when he started getting traction on his storytelling, because he was good at storytelling and it was a very creepy story, he started embellishing it to gain Twitter followers. I'm not saying he's lying. I'm saying he probably embellished things. He made them sound better. So Twitter would continue reading these week to week. He made it like a TV show over the course of six to eight months. And at the very end, he says, I'm trying to start working on other projects. I want to be known for other things besides this Dear David thing. I'm okay, I'm okay, just drop it. With that in my mind, I just can't believe every single thing that he said. Obviously, because it's Twitter, it's social media, it's really difficult for me to believe anything that doesn't happen to myself, as with you guys. All in all, I think he was scared for his life. There was this Dear David situation that developed in his mind and where he actually probably saw these things. Like him himself, he probably saw them and he had pictures of things moving in his apartment. So I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying the virality of it and the craziness probably was embellished so that he could have a story. Especially because it started in August, was like this weekly series all the way up until he caught it on camera and as soon as he caught it on camera he didn't want to answer any questions. He kind of stepped back and was like, I'm okay guys, I'm moving on to bigger and better things. I would say, Adam, I respect you hardcore. Good job. This is probably the greatest storytelling of a scary happening I've ever seen in my entire life. So wow, this is awesome. Super interesting. I want to read more into it to make sure that my accusations were like okay. I just think it's a little skeptical. I love this story though. It's absolutely amazing. So with that being said, I really, really do enjoy looking into this stuff and I might make a part two if you guys want it. But either way, there are a million other things that happen in the world. More than just a story, less than just a ritual. If you want to see more debunking videos like this, let's get this video to 50,000 likes. I want to know if you guys like this type of content, this type of format for a YouTube video. One big announcement before I leave, all the Beyond merch that I have right now is going to be no longer available as of next week. So if you want any of the Beyond merch, it is completely going away forever. So all that old design stuff, if you want it, get it now or forever hold your peace. And if you want to suggest a video idea, make sure you do that in the comments by saying, Dear Sam, ha, ah, Dear David, and then your video suggestion so I know. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was kind of creepy. It was really fun for me to make. I love reading into this stuff. So with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Adios. Wow, this is awesome. Super interesting. 